Hello, and welcome to another Stats in 5 video presented by the Statistics and Methods Lab at Arizona State University West Campus. My name is Ryan, and today we'll be talking about some basic descriptive statistics. I'll be using the software package SPSS, but the general concepts we touch on today will apply to whatever statistics program your institution provides. When we think of questions we can ask and answer using statistics, there are two broad types. The first type of questions are inferential questions. For example, if we want to know whether people in a weight loss program lost more weight than those not in the program, we could use some inferential statistics to figure out whether there was a reliable difference in the amount of weight lost between these two groups, and whether these differences can be generalized to the broader population. The second type of questions are descriptive in nature. For example, if we want to know what the average GPA is for a group of students, how widely or narrowly distributed these GPAs are in the sample of students that we collected data from, we would use descriptive statistics. Note that the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics, then, is that with descriptive statistics, we aren't trying to make inferences about the population. We're just trying to summarize the data we've collected from our sample. For the rest of this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to generate a few of the most fundamental descriptive statistics in SPSS. Specifically, we'll generate and briefly define what we mean by the mean, median, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis of a distribution. We have here a fictitious data set of student GPAs. Now before we start computing any statistics, let's get a feel for what our data set looks like by generating a histogram. A histogram is a bar graph that tells us how frequently distinct values in our data set occur. To generate a histogram in SPSS, head to the Graphs menu, Legacy Dialogues, then click Histogram. Move GPA over to the Variable box, check the square below it to overlay a normal distribution, then click OK. With this histogram, we can see how frequent different GPAs are in our sample. This frequency distribution looks like it might deviate from a normal distribution a bit, so let's compute some descriptive statistics to find out. To generate descriptive stats for our GPA variable, we can go to the menu options and select Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, then Frequencies. Then after we move over our GPA variable, let's go ahead and ask for the mean, median, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis in the statistics menu. We won't ask for a frequency table because GPA is a continuous variable. Shown here is the SPSS output from our frequency command. Let's walk through each of these statistics. The mean, or average, grade point average of our sample is about 2.72. The median, or middle, GPA is about 2.64. The median is found by lining up all of the numbers in a data set in order from least to greatest, then taking the value right in the center of that series of numbers. Means and medians are measures of central tendency, which approximate the location of the center of the distribution. Below these is the standard deviation, here about 0.42. The standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. Measures of dispersion tell us about how widely spread out our distribution is, and the standard deviation specifically is the average distance a score is from the mean score of the sample. Lastly, I want to mention skewness and kurtosis. These two metrics tell us more nuanced information about the way our data are distributed. First, skewness. This value here, 1.185, tells us if the data are distributed evenly about the mean, or on either side of the mean. That is, if we ask the question, is finding a score greater than the mean equally as probable as finding a score less than the mean? Our skewness statistic gives us a hint about the answer. Our value of 1.15 tells us that our distribution is positively skewed, that finding a value greater than the sample mean is less likely than finding a value less than the sample mean. A 
perfectly normal distribution has a skewness statistic of zero. So the larger the deviation from zero, the greater consideration you might give towards transforming your data set in some way to make it more normal. Some authors have suggested that skewness statistics between negative two and positive two are sufficiently normal. But you can read more about that issue of what too much skewness might be elsewhere. Now, let's talk about kurtosis. Technically, kurtosis is a measure of the combined weight of the tails relative to the rest of the distribution. In other words, it's a measure of how fat or skinny the tails of your distribution are. We won't get into the details of different values of kurtosis here or their implications for analyzing your data using inferential tests, but it can be helpful to note what high, low, and negative kurtosis make your distribution look like. The kurtosis of a perfectly normal distribution is three, and we can see what that looks like here. Platykurtic distributions, or distributions with low kurtosis relative to a normal distribution, have relatively few outliers, and scores are more clustered around the mean. Leptokurtic distributions, distributions with high kurtosis, have heavier tails. That is, they have more outliers relative to a normal distribution. Our kurtosis value is about 1.28. So we know from our basic analysis that the tails of our GPA distribution are light relative to a normal distribution, that there are relatively few outliers, and our scores are closely clustered around the mean. We will go more in depth regarding violations of normality and data transformations in another video. But for now, I hope that this review of fundamental descriptive statistics has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line on Facebook, via email, or you can just come by the SAM lab at ASU West. We also offer consulting services online or over the phone for students enrolled in the Arizona State University online psychology degree program. Again, I've been Ryan, and I'll see you next time.